My name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of Cruise Radio, and today we're going to do a walkthrough of Carnival Vista. If you like this video and you'd like to see more content, subscribe to the channel and give us a like. So Carnival Vista was launched in 2016 as Carnival Cruise Line's first Vista-class ship. So this was the class of ship after the Dream Class. She carries 4,977 guests at full capacity. She's 133,500 tons and has 15 guest decks. You'll find quite a few categories of staterooms on Carnival Vista, including 74 suites, 854 balconies, 264 ocean view rooms, 732 interior rooms, and 25 of these staterooms are accessible. Okay, so onto the decks of Carnival Vista. All of Deck 1 and Deck 2 are staterooms. You'll find those cove balconies here. Those are the balconies that are closer to the waterline. Also, the family harbor area. Those are the family suites on board Carnival Vista with the private, dedicated family lounge. That's accessible by key as well. So you have to be staying in a family harbor stateroom in order to access the lounge, which has breakfast, games, an ice cream machine, and all that fun stuff. Deck 3 now has both public areas and staterooms. You'll find those staterooms on the forward part of Deck 3. Deck 3 midship is where the atrium is. That's where you actually board Carnival Vista. And then just behind the atrium, you're going to have one of two main dining rooms. A single-story dining room called the Reflections Restaurant is the midship dining room. And then the aft dining room is a two-deck high on Deck 3 and Deck 4 dining room. And that is called the Horizons Restaurant. The Horizon restaurant in the back of the ship does have a bar in it, not really used that much. Um, I think it was more of a, wow, this is going to be an awesome place for people to have pre-dinner uh, pre drinks at, but now it's just more of a kind of an empty space. I'm curious to see if they keep those bars on these Vista class ships in the aft dining room once the ships do go through uh, dry dock because it doesn't seem like it's working out too well for them. The chef's table is in a cool spot. Um, it's right in the middle of the galley on deck three. So it's between the midship dining room and the aft dining room. And you're actually able to watch the chefs cook around you when you're dining in there. There is a chef's table fee on Carnival Vista. And that's $95 per person as of February 2019. And like the other Carnival ships, if you're trying to transit from the aft part of the ship or the back part of the ship to the midsection or mid to back, uh, you'll, you can't use deck number three because that's where the galley is. And of course, you can't walk through the galley. So you have to transit on deck two. That's going to be where the staterooms are or go up to deck four and just walk right through the limelight lounge. That takes us to deck number four. This is where the liquid lounge is located. This is a two deck high theater known for some obstructions. So my advice, if you want to get a good seat in here, sit on the ground level up close if you want to see one of those playlist production shows. If you don't care about your seating, you could sit wherever you want. Just make sure you aren't behind a pole. There's a, there's a big pole issue in this theater here. There's also a bar in the back of the theater on the ground level on deck four. Once again, you can access this theater from deck four and deck five. When you're walking out of the theater, you'll come to the fun shops on both your port and starboard side. I also want to note that there aren't any atrium elevators in here. So you'll have a, a bank of eight elevators outside of the theater, but the, you know, the atrium elevators that we're all used to on the previous classes of Carnival ships, not so much here because the Vista atrium is only three decks high here. So you're, you're going to have stairwells, uh, staircases that transit from deck five to four to three and no elevators that actually face the atrium themselves. But overall, the Vista atrium is nice. There's some nice music in here in the evenings, a uh, little dance floor, as well as that dreamscape, that big sphere in the middle of the main atrium that goes up three different decks and all kind of displays. I think they rotate like a hundred different types of displays and images on the uh, dreamscape throughout the cruise. You'll have a couple of more fun shops behind the Vista atrium on deck four. Then you have the Vista casino behind the Vista atrium. You'll also find a dream Dreamscape in the Vista Casino, although not as big as the one in the main atrium. You can also see up onto Deck 5 from the Casino on Deck 4, kind of a plexiglass um, divider between 4 and 5, so the smoke doesn't go from Deck 4 to Deck 5. In fact, smoking doesn't really seem to be a major issue in the casino here. Yeah, it does exist. If you want to see the game on a Sunday or whenever they're playing a game, um, walk back to the Skybox Sports Bar. That's just behind the casino, right there along the lower promenade. That has some betting tables in it, a ton of TVs, that 24-hour sports ticker. And in here, you won't be able to be exposed to any of the smoking because no smoking is allowed in Skybox. Continuing our walk on the lower promenade, you'll pass the little art gallery. And then the Limelight Lounge. This is where the Punchliner Comedy Club is held. Now, 
as always, and as most of the other carnival ships, the late night show is very, very popular. So I would suggest maybe start lining up about 30 minutes before showtime. Again, like the theater up front, there are some obstruction views here with poles, but I guess the poles got to be there to hold the roofs up, right? Leaving the Limelight Lounge, you'll have four elevators and then the Horizons Restaurant. This is going to be the two-deck dining room in the aft part of the ship. Awesome views if you sit on deck three or deck four aft there. If you do want to sit in the back by the windows, you may want to request that right when you board or when the Major D starts his hours because the, these spaces go really, really quick because the views are just that stunning. Deck number five is a busy deck, so we'll start in the front of the ship where the second floor of the Liquid Lounge is located. These are the cheap seats, if you will. Not the best seats in the house. Again, if you want a premium view, you'll want to go down to deck four, the ground level of this theater. Just outside of the theater, you'll find a bank of eight elevators, and then you'll find more fun shops around the atrium. I'll also add that there are four elevators midship and also four elevators in the back of the ship or aft. Cherry on Top is also located here where you can get a pound of your favorite candy or a scoop of ice cream. There's a cool little ice cream shop located within Cherry on Top that is additional, but um, a lot of toppings and all of that in there, so um, really, really good there. It's also worth noting that on Deck 5, on the outside, is a outside walkway that goes from the front of the ship to pretty much the aft end. And I say pretty much because um, Deck 5 aft is where the, where the uh, Havana area is located. And it's a restricted area because the Deck 5 Havana suites actually have lanais on them. And for the privacy of those guests, they have a key card access doorway there. So if you're not in the Havana cabin, you can't use the outside of Deck 5 as a walkway. You can, however, go back to the Havana bar through the inside of Deck 5. And anyone can go there throughout the day. But those outside side doors do remain shut 24 hours a day. Back inside on Deck 5, you'll find a central area. We'll call it midship. There's a bonsai sushi here, an alchemy bar, a Fahrenheit. 555 Steakhouse and the Piano Bar. Both of the dining venues, the Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse, as well as the Bonsai Sushi, you have an opportunity to eat outside on Deck 5 if the weather is good and not too windy. It uh, usually works out pretty nice out there. You also have the Piano Bar here as well, and of course the Alchemy Bar. Heading back, you'll walk right through Pixel's photo gallery, Carnival using facial recognition uh, in their photo gallery here. You can see the pictures throughout the cruise on this big digital board, or even check them out on your stateroom TV or on the Carnival smartphone app. The downloads, though, is still a little pricey, which is kind of weird because, you know, they're not using ink to print the photos, but they're still you know, charging you a pretty good amount for a photo. Also, check out they have photo packages. Carnival keeps adding and pulling those photo packages, so you might want to check that out um, if you want to buy a lot of photos. Of course, photos are always free to take and fun to take, just expensive to buy. Now, behind Pixels, you'll find the Red Frog Pub, always a fun place in the Red Frog where they're brewing their own beer. Also, uh, tabletop beer machines and two bartenders, always on duty. They also give a brewery tour in here. It's an extra fee. It's like $14.95 or maybe $19.95, but you get to sample some beer with the brewmaster on board and some really talented musicians in the Red Frog Pub as well. Walking outside of the Red Frog Pub and towards the aft part of the ship or the back part of the ship, you'll come up on the Internet Cafe and then the Shake Spot slash Java Cafe. This is where they make those specialty coffees or you can grab a milkshake. You can even spike your milkshake if you want to here. Not too bad of a price. Either like $5.95, I think, for a regular milkshake and $7.95 if you want it spiked. Ocean Plaza is right next to that. This is the open space that hosts trivia, uh, music at night, most importantly, where one of the exits are for Guy's Pig and Anchor Smokehouse Barbecue. That's that free venue located on the starboard side of Deck 5. On the outside deck, it has that complimentary barbecue during embarkation day and on sea days. And really, really solid barbecue here. And go embarkation day. It's the, it's the best time to go when there's not a million people out there. At the very back of Deck 5 are the Havana Suites and Havana Bar. The suites have access to their own pool and hot tubs located on the back of Deck 5. This is called the Havana Retreat. This area is closed to the public before 7 o'clock. So at 7 o'clock, it opens up for anyone to use the pool and the two hot tubs and the back bar here. But during the daytime, it's only available for Havana guests. The Havana Bar is available to anyone whenever the Havana Bar is open. Just that back area is restricted before seven o'clock. All right, deck six, seven, eight, and nine are mostly staterooms with the exception of the IMAX theater and thrill theater located on deck six. There is a fee for the IMAX and thrill theater, uh, $13 for adults for IMAX and 10 for kids. And the thrill theater is about $6 per person. Just outside of the entrance to IMAX, you'll find the Warehouse Arcade, also the Circle C Club. That's for teenagers 12 to 14 years old. 
Now we'll head up to deck number 10. The forward part of deck 10 is all staterooms. Deck 10 midship is where you'll find that beach pool and those two little huts that are around the pool. Also a small splash area up here. You'll see that deck 10 and deck 11 and deck 12 actually all hug the pool. So there's multiple levels of seating around the pool. And this is where you'll also find the seaside theater where they play movies at nighttime. There's popular venues like the Red Frog Rum Bar, Blue Iguana Tequila Bar, Blue Iguana Cantina, and Guy's Burger Joint all up here as well. Just behind here is the Lido Marketplace. This is the buffet area that is divided into two sections. Each section mirrors each other, so pretty much the back part of the buffet is the same as the front part for the most part. Walking back is where you'll find the pizza joint and the seafood shack. Also the Tide's Pool and Tide's Bar, a couple of hot tubs out here. Also steps back here that will take you up to deck 11. This is where there is more seating where you can look down onto deck number 10. Deck 11 is where you'll find the two specialty restaurants on Carnival Vista. You have Cucina del Capitano up here and Gigi's Asian Kitchen. Of course, that's an Italian restaurant and an Asian restaurant. Now, at nighttime, both of these venues are $15 per person. During the daytime, they're complimentary, but with a limited menu. So the Italian place has the Captain's Pasta Bar during the day located at Cucina. And then at Gigi Asian Kitchen, there is a, I guess we'll call it like a walk, a couple of appetizers, a couple of salads there. A limited menu, but it is complimentary at both places during lunch. Normally serve lunch until about 2 o'clock or so. You want to check your fun times for more information on that, though. Deck 11 Midship is where you'll find Camp Ocean and Dr. Seuss's Bookville. That's for ages 2 to 11 there. Deck 12 forward is the Fitness Center and the Cloud 9 Spa. This also includes where you'll find the thermal suites, the treatment rooms, also the men and women's sauna located in here as well. Also for the guys, this is a good place to take a shower to avoid the small showers in the staterooms. Uh, perhaps for the women too, I've never been in the ladies' locker room, but guys, definitely um, a lot of space and a big shower in here. Outside of the spa and above the Lido deck on deck 12 is the waterworks. You'll have two water slides here, one that you use a raft to go down, and the other one is a speed slide, also a play area with a splash zone for the kids. Just behind the movie screen, moving aft on deck 12, you have Sports Square. This includes the mini golf, the clubhouse bar, a uh, bowling alley. Not a full-size bowling alley, but like, mm, I don't know. It's a mini bowling alley, we'll call it. Also a giant gaming area, and a jogging track is located up here on deck 12 as well. All the way back on deck 12 is the Sky Fitness area and the basketball court. Skipping deck number 13 because it doesn't really exist on this ship. Go straight to 14. This is the entrance to the Sky Ride, which is really cool. Also the ropes course just opposite of that. A lot of people will ask how you would describe the Sky Ride. Picture sitting in a tricycle harnessed in just 200 feet above the ocean and kind of hanging there. It's a bicycle pedal type contraption that brings you around from midship all the way aft and then back again and you pedal your way. There's a couple of hills there and a couple of cool little drops. Nothing too scary, but they don't want you racing on there. So if you have someone you're doing it like opposite of, they don't want you to kind of uh, see who can cross the finish line first. But obviously you want to because when you're next to someone, you're in like total competition, competitive mode. I'll also link to a video in here. It's a full tour of the Sky Ride, and this is free, but it does get pretty busy up here during sea days. Opposite of the Sky Ride is the ropes course where you can test your skills on several different obstacles. They have a beginner's ropes course and an advanced ropes course. Both of them are pretty easy as long as you have some simple coordination. And lastly, we have the Serenity Deck. This is located on the forward part of Deck 14. This is the adults only area. Here you have a bunch of clam shells to protect you from the sun, some hammocks, some loungers. Also two hot tubs located uh, on the port and starboard side. Also on sea day, uh, they have a creation salad bar up here. This is where you can have your uh, have one of the chefs make you a salad to order. Pretty chill area. People always ask if you hear a lot of noise coming from Lido in this area. And the truth is you don't. Sometimes you'll hear some screams from the kiddos who are on the slides. But other than that, pretty quiet. The more forward you get on Serenity, the less noise you will hear because that's the way it works, right? You're further away from the noise of the Lido deck. So that'll do it for our tour of Carnival Vista. All right, if you like this video and you'd like to see more content, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. My name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of Cruise Radio in the Daily Cruise Radio podcast. You can find both of those where you listen to your favorite podcast. Just type in Cruise Radio or Cruise Radio News. We'd love to have you a part of the show. What do you think about Carnival Vista? Would you sail her? Have you sailed her? Let us know in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.